Antes siquiera de debutar en la NBA en 1982, Dominic Wilkins ya tenía su propia reputación baloncestística. Sus mates creaban una excitación inusitada entre los aficionados. Dominic Wilkins. Dominic, you hear that roar that went up when they uh, saw one of your dunks. You ready to do that this year in the NBA? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to get there and do well. Uh, hopefully I get there and uh, have a good season. I'm just really concerned about getting there playing ball right now. Dominic came in and here comes this young, energetic, high flyer out of the University of Georgia. I think everybody in the organization felt that this was the cornerstone, the future of the Atlanta Hawks. The tip is taken by Roundfield to the Hawks to Dominique breaking E jams. Roundfield, right side, stops for the jumper, rebound, jammed in by Dominique. Showtime for the rookie. This kid is going to be something. It was a scout report on me and said, look, do not let Dominique get a dunk. If he get a dunk, he gets off. He's the first person that would make you go home and put your VCR because he was a guy that you would say he's going to do something that you hadn't seen. They find Wilkins, look out. Dominic was the first guy I remember to routinely come in off of camera frame and, and put in offensive rebounds. Hawks averaged just 7,400 people uh, the year prior to Dominique coming here. And in Dominique's fifth year, sixth year, they averaged 15,700 people a game. Those people came to watch Dominique Wilkins. Dominique is red hot. You've got to see him get your tickets now. You don't want to miss this young man. Dominique siguió subiendo peldaños en la élite de la liga hasta convertirse en una de las principales señas de identidad. You could start to see what was building, what was developing, and they were growing, and they played with more confidence. We were a team. We truly were a team. We had pieces. Price off the pick. Had it knocked away. Atlanta will get a break. It's a three-on-one. Dominique behind his back to Willis. We didn't have great individual uh, superstars. The thing that put us on the map was our consistent hard play. We played hard all the time. Wow, how about the effort of the Hawks? How about the second opportunity? Everybody's playing very well together. Rivers the other way. Dominique and bang. Dominique suddenly stepped to the fore as the young leader of this team, a guy who you could give the ball to to get a score when you needed it. Wilkins. Dominique Wilkins. Stolen right back by Dominique. And Out and get a shot of that. Principally because of Dominique. We had an ad campaign uh, the second half of the 80s. We were called Atlanta's Air Force. That was kind of our persona. And we had a great time with it. Los Hawks rayaban a gran altura y Dominique era el piloto de la nave, decidido a situar a su equipo en la superélite. I knew we had a chance to win in this league, you know, on, on, the, on the grand scale. Unfortunately, the East was loaded. <laughs> Atlanta llegó a alcanzar su objetivo, pero durante la década de los 80 se tuvo que enfrentar a dos monstruos enormes en la conferencia este, los Detroit Pistons y los Boston Celtics. Los Hawks nunca llegaron a una final de la NBA y su líder tuvo que soportar duras críticas por los supuestos fracasos en la postemporada. I think there were a lot of things that were said or people assumed about Dominique that were very incorrect. He's got a bad rap in some people's eyes of not winning and shooting too much. I had to carry that load. So when things was going good, I got the accolades. When things was going bad, I got the blame. So I didn't worry about the criticism because I knew, and I think my peers knew, what I brought to the table. Dominique really never had another great player to play next to him. He really never had that second guy uh, to take some of the slack. He was the show. Pero en 1992, el espectáculo se cortó de raíz cuando Wilkins sufrió la rotura del tendón de Aquiles. Su carrera en conjunto y no solo aquella temporada quedó amenazada. Pocos auguraban que volvieran nunca a ser el mismo, pero tras una dura y larga rehabilitación, Nick regresó una temporada después. 
Para desterrar a los incrédulos, Wilkins siguió haciendo mates estratosféricos, bajando el balón como nadie lo ha vuelto a hacer, nunca jamás. Dominique to me at that time was like having a five carat diamond ring. But years down the road I realized he really was a ten carat. Everybody's looking so you know I got a flip. You take me, that can't be. Shook and took like all rookies.